This video will conclude chapter 9, triads. The first thing I'm going to show you are chord or triad inversions. Similar to an interval when we inverted it and we took the bottom note and put it up on the top, up an octave, when we invert a triad, we're going to take the root or the bottom note of that triad. So right now I'm playing a C, E, G triad, a major triad, but if I invert it into first inversion, I take this bottom C and it goes up to the top. So I'm still playing C, E, G, but I'm playing it in first inversion. C is still considered to be my root. The root is just now up at the top. E is still my third. The third's just on the bottom now. G is still my fifth. The fifth is just in the second position now. So this is a C first inversion triad. Now if we do a second inversion, we not only take the C and put it up on the top, we also take my E and I stick it up on the top as well. So now I have G, which was it still is the fifth, but it's in the bottom position. We have my root of the triad in the middle, and then we have the E, which is the third, up on the top right now. So we have root position, which is just normally in closed position. They're stacked in thirds. First inversion, the C is up on the top. Second inversion, that E is now up on top of the C as well. And I'll show you this on the staff, and I think it'll be very clear to you as well. Now that you've heard the inversions on the piano, let me show you them on the staff and show you how we're going to build and construct the inversions. So I have already up here a C and a C major triad. Now if we're in the key of C, since there are no sharps or no flats, this is actually going to be a Roman numeral 1 triad, which we're going to talk about in just a little while, but trust me on that. Or in sheet music, you might just see a capital C as far as what the chord would be that would be played either by piano or guitar. So we have a one chord. Now if we take this and we want to do first inversion, I'm going to just take my root, my C, and I'm going to move it up an octave. And then that bottom note goes away, and that is my C chord in first inversion. My root is now up at the top, and my third is now the note that's on the bottom. This is still considered to be a C chord. It's still considered to be a one chord. It's just in a different position. It can lead to different voicings. It can also at times, the inversions will be easier to play on the piano fingering-wise, etc. So there are different functions and reasons why we have these inversions. They're, they're not just to confuse you. Now, instead of leaving it as a plain one, you'll often see this notated with a six, or sometimes the six-three. A lot of times that three gets left off. But what that six and that three mean are that there are now it's now an interval of a six between the top and the bottom note. Or as before, when we were in root position, which was just our C, E, G, closed triad, that's what that means when they're still stacked in thirds. It's not a fifth any longer, it is now a sixth, which is what the six stands for. And the three stands for the third that is still from that bottom note to that middle note. So that is a C triad in first inversion. Now if I want to do second inversion, what I do is I take my first inversion and I now take the bottom note and stick it up on top. So second inversion is going to have the fifth as the bottom note. My C stays up there, and now I have my E up on the top as well. So root position was here, which was just C, E, G stacked up in thirds. First inversion, I took the C, stuck it up on the top. Second inversion, I took my E and stuck it up on top. And now second inversion, it's not a 6-3 anymore. It is still a 6 between the bottom note and the top note, so that 6 stays there. But now, what is the generic interval now between the bottom note and that middle note? Is it still a third, like over here? It's not. It's now a what? It's a 4. So second inversion is often notated in classical music as a 1-6-4. Let's just do a couple others to practice our first and second inversions. And if you're smart, you'll follow along on staff paper so that you can be doing this on your own. So first, we have the key of there's one flat in here, and I already wrote it in for you as far as what my one chord would be, which just means that it's the triad built on the first scalary, which we're going to talk about in the later part of this video. So I have my F major triad, and again, in popular sheet music, you just might have an F up there on the top of maybe the vocal part to tell the guitarist or the pianist to play an F chord. But we have a one chord, that's just in root position. 
Now if we want to do a first inversion, what am I going to do? I'm going to take my F and I'm just going to move it up an octave, okay? So we still have my A and my C. The F was down there on the bottom. Now my F's on top. That's it for first inversion. Let's do second inversion. So let's do a one, six, four. Again, my F, it's already up on the top for first inversion. Now that A just is going to go on the top as well. So my C is now the bottom note of my triad. I have my F and I need to draw a ledger line in there for my A. Sorry, that's in the way over there. But we have same notes again, F, A, C. So it's still an F chord or it's still a one chord. It's just a one chord in 6-4 in second inversion. Last one we're going to do. What key am I in? I have an F sharp and a C sharp. So what key am I in? D. And I already wrote it here for you. So this is my one chord or my D chord or my triad in the key of D because it's built on the first scale degree. So again, this is, these are all one chords. They just function as a one chord or a tonic triad in each different key. And the names of these triads are all based on the scale degree chapter names that we learned in chapter eight. So anyway, here's my root position for second inversion. I just take that D, stick it up on the top. So that's my one, six, three. First inversion, second inversion, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna leave my A as my bottom note now. My D is still there. And now this F goes up on the top. And that's my one, six, four, or my one chord in second inversion. Again, in popular sheet music, this might just be written as a D. Sometimes it might even just tell you what the inversion is. But in classical music, we use the Roman numerals to show us what the function is within that key. The last part of this chapter focuses on the diatonic triads. What the diatonic triads are, are triads that are built upon each scale degree without adding any sharps or flats outside of the key. So within the key of C major, which has no flats or no sharps, all that I've done so far is I've just stacked triads based upon every scale degree that is in the key of C major. So you notice we have a C, E, G chord, we have a D, F, A chord, E, G, B, etc. Now on site, let's see which ones of these are actually major triads. And you might think that since we're in a major key, like C major, that every single one of these triads would be major, but actually it's not. So let's go ahead and just take a look and analyze these triads. So first of all, I did already put a number one here, because in the key of C, we're going to be calling this a one chord since C is the first scale degree in the key of C. But you'll notice that D, F, A, if you think about what makes up a major triad, a major triad is made up, remember, of a major third on the bottom. And from D to F, that's not a major third. So that's not a major triad. Here, the same thing, E to G, that's not a major third, that's a minor third. So those two are not major triads. But if you'll look here, F, A, C, that one's a major triad, G, B, D, that's a major triad. And in fact, we're just going to stop there because I'm going to tell you right now that the only ones that we have that are major triads are the first one, the fourth, and the fifth, okay? And now, we're also going to learn that we are naming each of these triads based on the scale degree. So since this one is a Roman numeral one, two, three, four, we're going to call this one a four and we use capital Roman numeral to show that it's major. If it's lowercase, it means that it's a minor triad. So this is a four chord, and this is a five chord. Now this is a four chord because in the key of C, it's built on the fourth scale degree, okay? This is a five chord because in the key of C, G is the fifth scale degree. And I'm just gonna tell you right now that this two chord right here, it's minor because this is a minor third and this is a major third and you can check, check it out and test me out if you want to. This third chord right here or the Roman numeral three, that's another minor triad. The sixth chord is also a minor triad. The seventh triad actually is going to be a diminished triad. And then we're back to the tonic, so we're back to Roman numeral one. So the primary triads and what we're going to be practicing in your homework this week are the one, four, and five. That means within every major key, 
the one, the four, and the five are the major triads that might be used to harmonize a melody. So if you, if you were writing a melody or you heard a melody and it was a happy melody, do you think you're going to be harmonizing that happy melody with a two chord or a three chord? Probably not, unless you wanted to give some depth or some emotion to that piece. Same with that diminished triad. Do you think you're going to be uh, harmonizing something that's really happy with a diminished triad, with a triad that's built on the seventh scale degree? Probably not. And we're going to get into more harmonization techniques later on, but that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of their function. So right now what we're going to practice is just learning how to build ones, fours, and fives within different major keys besides just the key of C. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to do one and we're going to do some in the key of F. And now once you write your key signature to the left, you do not have to add any flats or sharps because in the key of F, I'm already telling you that ones, fours, and fives are going to be major triads and it works that way in any key. What, no matter what major key you're in, your one chord, your four, and your five are going to be major triads. So again, put your key signature there. Once you stack your thirds, they're major. So in the key of, when I have one flat on here, we're in the key of what? F. Okay, so we're going to be building a one, a four, and a five. The first thing you need to identify, if I hadn't told you already, was what your key is if you need to build a one. When we need to build a one, we're building our tonic triad. So what's the tonic in the key of F? F. So we need to just put our F there, and then all we have to do, stack our thirds, and we're done with that tonic triad. Now let's do our four triad, our four chord in the key of F. All you have to do is count up to the fourth scale degree. F, G, A, B flat, okay? Now again, the flat's already written over here, so you don't have to then write it here as well. That would be redundant. All that you have to do is stack your thirds, and this is a B flat D F chord. It's your major, and it's your four triad. Five, it's going to be the fifth scale degree in the key of F, so F, G, A, B, C. So all that you have to do is do a C, E, G triad, and you're done. That's your five chord. Now notice. We have the same FAC chord up here that's called a 4 as we have down here that's called a 1. And why is that? Well, that's because they're going to function differently in different keys. And when we talk about progressions, that will make a little more sense to you. But in the key of C, the FAC chord is a 4 because it's built on the fourth scale degree of the key of C. But in the key of F, F is your tonic. So FAC is your one chord since it's built on your scale degree one. All right, let's do one more just as an example to you. And let's do, we'll do the key of, how about D? So I already have put my key signature here, here for you. So we have F sharp and C sharp, so we know that we're in the key of D. And on your homework, that's what you're going to need to do. Look at those key signatures, identify your key so you know what your tonic is, because that'll give you your one triad. So let's build one, and let's build a four, and let's build our five. So our one is going to be built on what as my root? One, the first scale degree. And I already told you we're in the key of D, and I'll write that over here in case you forgot. So all we have to do is go D, F sharp, A. Again, you don't have to write the sharp because it's in the key signature. Just stack your thirds. Four, what's the fourth scale degree of the key of D? D. E, F sharp, G. So all that we have to do is start it on G, stack your thirds, and you're done. Five. So we just have to count up to the fifth scale degree. D, E, F sharp, G, A. So all we have to do is find A, and this is actually going to be an A, C sharp, E triad. But again, the C sharp is in my key signature, so we're good to go. So that's all that you need to do to find out your primary triads. So all you need to do is identify your key, the first or the number uh, one Roman numeral tonic triad is going to be based with the root of the first scale degree. The fourth or the subdominant is going to be based with the root of the fourth scale degree of whatever key you're in. And the fifth or the dominant is going to be based on the fifth of whatever key that you're in. And then later on, we're going to learn to take these triads and harmonize the melody that you get to write. So you can look forward to that.